Today we're going to talk about transportation across the cell membrane. So as you know, every cell is protected by a cell membrane. That cell membrane is made mostly out of lipids. And that is because lipids are nonpolar. The whole point of a cell membrane is that if something polar, like for example a water molecule, was to come by, it comes over to the membrane Oh, and it bounces right off again because it's polar and the membrane is nonpolar, so it doesn't allow it to go through. Now, there are some things that can get through a membrane. For example, small nonpolar things like oxygen, which is a balanced molecule, will come over to the lipid membrane, and since it is nonpolar, it will go right on through into the cell. Something like water can get in but it has to use a protein channel to help it out. So if there's a protein channel here, the outside of that protein would be nonpolar, but the inside of that protein could be polar, therefore water could go right through the channel. And that is how water gets in and out of cells, through these little open protein channels. Sometimes things need a little bit more help than that. So something like a sugar molecule or a glucose is a little bit bigger. It's got a bunch of oxygen, so it is a little bit more polar. And also, it needs a little bit more extra help getting through. So, there are protein channels that are specific to sugar that sugar can go through, but they only work if there's also an extra molecule, in this case, insulin. So the insulin will attach to the protein channel. The protein channel will open. And now the glucose can get through. We call that facilitated diffusion. All of these are important because they happen easily without energy. Also, these things tend to go where there's less of them. So oxygen, water, and sugar will only enter a cell that doesn't have enough of one of those things. That's one of the really important items. Also, all of these are fairly small. But what about other things that need to enter cells? Sometimes, for instance, we want to create a situation where we push something into a cell. This happens in the nervous system and the muscle system. We want to tell a cell to do something, so we provide a signal, and that signal needs to be pushed into the cell. Sodium is an ion. Because of that, it is charged, it is polar, and it cannot go through the lipid membrane. It will bounce right off again. There's also typically a bunch of other positive stuff inside of nerve cells that it would be trying to get into. So it doesn't really want to be there. But when we want to send a signal, we need to push it through. To do that, we use active transport. Active transport means we put energy in the form of ATP into pushing that sodium into the cell. So now we have actively pushed it where it wasn't expecting to go. Now all of these things have been small so far. The last thing that we're going to talk about is how we get big things in and out of the cell. If something is too big, there's no way it's going to be able to go through this membrane, even if it was nonpolar, because it would not be able to push past those little molecules and it would poke a hole in the cell. That would be a problem. But what can happen is that part of the membrane can actually stretch out and try to pick up this thing and grab it and pull it inside. Now when that happens, the big material will go inside the cell, but stay inside of a membrane in a vesicle. So a vesicle is a little transport item in the cell. Vesicles can also transport things out of the cells. So when we produce really big proteins, we put them inside of vesicles, and they go up to the edge of the cell, where they will release out into the external environment. If something's coming into the cell in a vesicle, 
We call it endocytosis. If something is coming out of the cell over here, we'll call it exocytosis. That is how you get things in and out of cells.